All right, we're back here at Town Hall. Mark Schwartz joining me uh, now. You know, I looked up the word finish. Uh, it's verb. It, it means to bring something to an end or completion. What the Cavaliers didn't do last night after doing so much of what they needed to do to finally get a game in this series. You were in the locker room last night after the game. What was the mood? Fatigue, demoralized, just beaten up. You know, just kind of understanding that this team, no matter what we do, whether we play well, whether we don't play well, they have more than we do. LeBron basically, it was a capitulation, I think, after the game saying, you know, this juggernaut of, of Golden State has more firepower than anything I've ever faced in my career. But the most indelible image for me was just the heartbroken look on Kyle Korver's face. A 14-year NBA path to this moment, he lives and he dreams of this moment. He had the ball in his hands on a great LeBron pass in the left corner. That's his favorite shot on the court. When it left his hands, he thought it was going in. He says he's going to replay that shot for a long, long time. That shot, Jay, might have been the one that sealed that victory for Cleveland, and he's not going to get that back. No, he's not going to get that back at all. Uh, Mark Schwartz, we appreciate that, your perspective. Thank you much. Um, up four with just over a minute to play last night. Tough pill to swallow for LeBron James. For more on game three, let's send it back to Kevin and Lindsay in Bristol. Thank Jay, you, Jay Harris. Thank you so much here. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, 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 I heard him say my oh, name. Gotcha, that's, gotcha, all. Gotcha, that's, gotcha, all. Gotcha. that's all, that's all, that's uh, all. For much more, let's bring in Tim Legler as well as Ryan Rossillo. Um, all right, let's go to this situation here um, because we saw this a year ago, and here's the big difference. Shot doesn't go in, right? Uh, Kyrie had that play and that isolation, had the chance to go in, decides, I want to do something else. A year ago, it goes in. Show me the difference. Yeah, it's more than just make or miss. I think he contributed to why he made it last year, why he didn't this year. It was a very unique decision that he made last night. I don't know why he made it, because he could have gone in a different direction. And we'll start by looking at last year, okay, and some eerie similarities here. Okay, first thing is this. we got a tie score. we got a minute to go. Okay, let's, let's, let's set the stage. The next thing is this. He's got Klay Thompson on him right here, six foot seven. He's got Steph Curry right here. That's J.R. Smith that he's guarding. So Kyrie Irving says, I'd rather operate against Steph. So what does he do? He waits, and here comes J.R. Now J.R. is going to come over here. He's going to set this screen, take Kyrie over to that ISO wing area. That automatically forces the switch to get Steph Curry on him. In addition to that, you know, Richard Jefferson clears out. He takes Harrison Barnes with him. So he's got the entire right side of the floor operating now against a sixth four player. Now he waits, lets the traffic clear, he gets into this rocker step dribble, and then here's the big thing right here, okay? Steph Curry goes up to contest, Well, Kyrie Irving is up above that. He's above that. So now he's got a shot that he feels comfortable with before he even takes it because he knows Steph can't get there, and he makes the shot. Now, let's go to last night. Some similar situations here. He's got Klay Thompson on six foot seven. Here's Steph Curry. He is guarding J.R. Smith. Well, what J.R. Smith wants to do is come over here and set this pick and let Kyrie come to this area of the floor, forcing Steph onto him in the exact same situation. Now, in this case, you're down one with 25 seconds to go. Well, watch Kyrie Irving. He waves him off. No, no, go back over there. And now you're operating against one of the best perimeter defenders in the league, six foot seven, almost gets him there. Now, when he goes up, Clay Thompson is contesting at a level that Steph Curry can't. And at this point in the game, Kyrie Irving had been beating them up by getting to the rim all night long. He had to be a little bit fatigued, but more importantly, he operated against a defender much more equipped to contest that shot. So I don't know why Kyrie didn't want that switch. Like, he should have been thinking that from the time the ball was in his hands. Like, where is he? Oh, Steph, yeah, JR, come on. Mm -hmm. I want to operate against this guy. He took 13 dribbles on that play before he shot the basketball against Klay Thompson because he couldn't get the space that he wanted. Uh, he just was in a comfort zone against a smaller defender that I don't know why he didn't go back there. And that's not the only possession I thought that they really didn't manage right. The one before that, when LeBron had the ISO against Draymond, he had the entire right lane to drive it against a guy with five fouls. And he elected not to take that, took it back to the middle, and then at that point he made the right pass because it got congested. But he had a wide open lane against a Draymond Green with five fouls and Kevin Durant, the only thing back there. 
If you're LeBron James, I just think that the play was take the driving lane, try to put your shoulder into Durant if he tries to meet you at the rim and overpower him and try to take it yourself. He, he elected to go to the middle. Now Corver gets the shot. It's contested. He misses it. Those two possessions cost Cleveland a chance, I think, to make this a series. That's sort of exactly what Stu Goss yeah. was saying. Um, Ryan, so they were up four. You agree with Stu Goss. That's great. <laughs> oh, man. Well, that's the measuring stick, isn't it? Yes. No, I, mean, the day I feel made. validated as an analyst. <laughs> Especially if you're right, group. Like, Sam, group. you're right, yeah. because that's what he believes. So, well done. Um, they were up four with a minute left, Ryan. So, how do you, with your perception on how they blew it? Well, I really, I, I mean, I, I hate to be with everybody. Like, there's a reason why we're all agreeing here. Because I thought the other play with the Corver miss, it's, again, them trying to attack Steph. And I remember Legs and I talking on my radio show. We were shocked at how bad Golden State was getting into bad switches. They were inviting awful switches where Steph could just get abused, even at times that they could recover. But on this play, they tried to get into Steph again. They had all these staggered screens. All of these guys talked. They didn't get LeBron onto Steph. Steph found his way back down in the corner, avoids a screen, gets a contest against Korver, where it's still a great shot. Like, all of your Korver jokes today, they're bad jokes. They're all bad jokes mm -hmm. because that's a great shot. So I don't have a problem with the pass. It's very clear that Golden State, though, defensively was more prepared to close a close game than they were when they started blowing those games last year. But my, but my only thing with, is it a good shot for Kyle Korver? Yeah, he's one of the best shooters in the league. Yeah, I wish, when I played, I wish I had that shot. I'm confident I'm going to make it. Problem is, it's different when you look at other scenarios like historically. Well, you know, if Michael Jordan kicked it out the packs in the crib because it dictated that that was the right play. LeBron James had a driving lane. Draymond Green at one point even lunged at the ball. He was off balance with this entire right side of the floor open for the best player in the world. And he was getting calls. Go, put your head down and get to the rim. I just think it's one thing if they're shading that side and they're forcing him to traffic. Then I go, okay, where's he supposed to go? No, Draymond Green's feet were turned to give LeBron to his strong hand. So the play there is to beat him off the dribble and go attack the rim and try to force the officials to make a call or finish yourself because I think Draymond's not going to touch him. So it's going to be on Durant. And, and I get that. But if Korver, who's a 47% career shooter in the corners, makes that shot, everybody is praising LeBron for making the right decision, right? Yeah, but the problem I have is it wasn't the right play by LeBron James in the first place. The play was to take the drive because the drive was there. I'm not sitting here saying, force that drive. You're LeBron, you have to take the shot. It's silly. I, I know better than that. I know what good basketball is. The lane was open, so he should have taken that upon himself to, to, to take that drive. Once he went to the middle, it's definitely the right play because there's three defenders in the lane if you go that direction. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if he makes it, we're all saying, hey, what so a great decision. But the, the play should have been LeBron James at the rim because he had room to make the play, and I think he should have taken it upon himself to do that. From your experience as a former player, why does he make that call then not to do that? I, I, that's a good question. You know, the one thing that I always think about with LeBron, and I will probably forever, is I think there's always just that little bit in his mind about what if I don't get the call or he's got to go make two tough free throws potentially, mm -hmm. which has which not, not really always been his strong suit. No, especially this year. You're right. I mean, it's right. been an entire issue. I, that weighs on him a little bit, I think. I think that that play is so ingrained in every playmaker's head, though, that corner three, that you're even surprised when a guy like Curry reads it right. Like, I cannot – overestimate how important Curry's read to avoid the back screen there to turn back around and even get a hand up. Most guys don't contest it. They get caught on the help. They get the next thing you know, you're trying to get back in the corner. So I'm thinking LeBron. Like I'm not disagreeing with you here yeah. because when both teams went small last night, it was advantage Cleveland. Once Golden State went small, Cleveland was not afraid to continue to attack the rim. So I can understand yeah. you looking at it there going like, well, where was it now when you needed it the most? I've just seen that play so many times where that is the right read, and I think Curry did a really good job. One, one last point on that, if I can. And one thing about Kyle Korver, if you look at it again, one thing he didn't do right there, he, he drifted further to the corner, which is the only place that Steph Curry could have gotten to because he did get bumped a little bit on the screen. If Korver comes up out of the corner, even five to eight feet, up toward the wing, mm. which is a read that I would have made in that situation if I was a shooter in the corner. When I see my guy down pinned on the baseline and the drive is coming this way, I'm floating up to separate myself from my defender as much as I can. It's a clean look. Because Curry did still get a contest on that shot. Yeah. Makeable shot. But I thought Corver didn't necessarily find the best pocket to give him a chance to have a more uncontested shot.